actually matters to me in the work that I do on the ancient world because it was a fundamental problem in antiquity about how you reproduced really the male citizen body. It is a slightly uncomfortable process because in a way in that image of the reproduction of the citizen the woman didn't matter. The woman was the channel and the vessel through which more citizens happened, came about. Um, and of course the ancients saw the ambiguities of that, but the awkwardness of thinking about women as vessels, as women who kind of somehow were essential to the reproduction of citizens, but somehow weren't citizens themselves. In most ancient states, what was really crucial is that you got more male citizens. Uh, a, a rather different vision of what reproduction means from what we have today. I think that um, classics over the last 20 to 50 years has been actually quite interested in the idea both of how we of how the ancient world understood reproduction about where you know, about what actually happened in in the production of babies and you know whether the woman as i, I think was the, the main um <laughs> the main view of the ancients um the, the woman was somehow kind of merely a vessel for uh, the male seed to um, to generate. We've been in interested in, in classics in those kind of in the technical understanding of of, uh, of the reproductive process, but also I think in the more general understanding of what it is to what it is to kind of to reproduce a community and what it is for a community to survive and. You know, what, it, what it is for community to survive in, in conditions in which, you know, what in the ancient world, like most early modern communities, you know, 50% of the babies, you know, are dying before they're 10. Um, so there's a kind of social demographic, which is very interesting to, to me, but also a question of you know, how is it that people conceive the notion of reproduction, <laughs> um, you know, it's very easy to laugh at, at some of the ideas that the ancients had about this, but, the, uh, but um, simply the sense that somehow the woman was a tube, and you know, there was one orifice in the mouth and the other orifice in the vagina. It was all uh, kind of joined up, um, and and it provided the context in which the seed, blokish male seed, could develop. Um, Food for thought. <laughs> in, in my area of study, I think that you can't really understand notions of gender and gender difference and the continuity of the community unless you think about how people perceived, conceived, <laughs> and represented reproduction. And that goes from the, the, the material and physical to, of course, various kind of metaphors of reproduction in the reproduction of a, of a community. So I think that, you know, I don't think you could study the ancient world, at least, without in some ways thinking about reproduction. hard to say what you know how we should go in the future in research because you sort of almost always see that retrospectively um, but I, I think that I, I'm very interested in the way that modern notions of um, how reproduction happens uh, relate to ancient ones um, you know I suppose you know just to be a bit kind of social political and they're now no, I think that um, 
we tend to laugh at the ancients, thinking that, you know, the women are vessels for, for the male seed. But you know, I'm not sure that that's all that different from some of the ways that we think about women's role in reproduction now. I know that, you know, it does actually take two to make a baby, it doesn't well, mostly, I think. Not always, but by and large, it does. And you know, maybe we ought to actually think about a much greater equality in notions of reproductive responsibilities than we we tempted to to admit. Because it's always convenient to leave it to the women to be the vessels. Mm -hmm.